Hey, so I've been with Apple for a long time, so I decided to switch to Android just to see how things are, for the sake of the people, if you will. Fun fact, when I tried to buy this phone, I was using a new credit card, and instead of sending me a notification to confirm that I was making the purchase, Google sent a SWAT team, which smashed down my front door, broke my kneecaps, and held my grandmother hostage until I had filled out the forms that they asked me for. I don't know why, but it's still not fixed. Anyway, this is a pretty big video. Also, there are chapters, so pick and choose to your heart's content, but also, if you love me, maybe watch the whole video. Okay, let's jump right in. My first impressions. I love that shipping is carbon neutral. I don't know if Apple does that, but carbon neutral shipping, awesome. Let's talk about the hardware. The second I pulled this out of the box, I thought I should have bought a case for this. It's a pretty good looking phone, but God damn if it isn't slippery. The speakers are a bit of a problem. They have this issue where, first of all, there's actually no sound coming out of the left hole. Secondly, it's really easy to block the right hole, which essentially kills the sound almost entirely, except for the sound that's coming out of the speaker near where your ear would go, which sounds pretty terrible. Interestingly enough, the iPhone appears to have been built pretty much exactly the same way. I think I failed to notice before because my iPhone has a case. As far as the rest of it goes, it would seem that my iPhone gets a little bit louder, but otherwise the differences aren't that extreme. Next, let's talk about the screen. I've had it for only about a week and I can already see a scratch on the screen. That is concerning. Granted, it's really faint and it disappears at some angles, but if your screen is off and it's just sitting on your desk, you can see it. By contrast, it took me a little over three months to almost imperceptibly crack the screen of my iPhone. I still use that iPhone to this day and I still have trouble finding the crack in the screen. Also, I don't even know how I scratched the screen of my Android, whereas I dropped my iPhone six feet onto concrete where it bounced into a gravel pit. Just saying. Ceramic shield, this ain't. And no, I didn't buy a screen protector for either. Also, the screen is curved at the edges. I get accidental touches because of this, which is irritating. And I did a little research here. I guess Google does it just because they think it looks cool. It's a pain and I wish they would stop. Next, the camera. I love that I can take spherical photos. I went on a hike recently and this is really the only thing that begins to come close to capturing the awe of the Canadian mountains. On a separate note, given that Google is known for its algorithmic processing, I would really love it if they could figure out how to remove the glare when I'm taking pictures through glass, like at a display case or something. I also had a photo that I took in bright sunlight where I realized later that the focus was on the wrong thing, basically the background instead of the subject. Granted, visually, it would have been hard for the camera to guess what the subject was, but given how aggressively Google has been marketing the smartness of Pixel's camera, I'm really shocked that it got it wrong in the first place and that I can't change the focus of the picture afterwards, especially since a feature like this really only requires the taking of two two or three more photos on top of the fact that there are already three cameras on the device. So taking photos at different focal lengths doesn't seem like a big ask. It shouldn't even take extra time. Weirdly, I can listen to music while I'm using the video camera. Can't do that on an iPhone. I only mention it because sometimes I'm vibing and I decide to take a video and then the vibe is killed while I'm taking said video. Something else I can't do on an iPhone is take a full 360 panorama. With an Android, I can pretty much just turn in a circle and capture my surroundings. It's really cool. As far as I can tell, the Pixel really only stops the panorama when it senses that you traveled in a full circle. So if you really wanted to take a super long picture and just like run with it, you probably could. Here's the kicker though. Magic eraser. Holy shit. I don't know if you got served a million and one ads for the Pixel 6 Pro when it came out, but I did, and one feature I heard about a lot was Magic Eraser. Anyway, despite the annoying ads that I got for Magic Eraser, I have to say that I am very impressed by Magic Eraser. Not only does it work on spherical photos as well as panorama, it works on normal photos, and also it looks at the photos and suggests the things to remove quite intelligently. This is kind of a great combo because if you take a spherical photo, arms and legs get cut off. Strangers are more likely to appear in your photos. These two features together are just... I love it. Generally speaking though, I think we can argue that Pixel's camera is just miles better. It does more cool shit and it's better at night photos. Case closed. Next, we're talking about the battery. As far as I can tell, the battery is a little bit better. With an iPhone, I pretty much always have to make sure that I charge my phone at the end of the day. With an Android, however, I have to say that typically at the end of the day, I've got an ample, get it, ample, <laughs> amount of charge left over. Funny story, I even had one mental health day where I got stuck and even though I was scrolling TikTok for like four hours and using my Pixel very heavily, that battery kept going strong. Google Pixel, more reliable than your mental health. Oh, also battery sharing is very fucking cool and honestly, I love it. It is super well executed. I love the way that you can set a minimum so that you only give so much of your charge to your friend before your phone says, you've taken enough, I know about healthy boundaries. Let's talk about Google Assistant. Something I've griped about a lot in previous videos is how when there's more than one Google Assistant, it's really hard to make the right one hear you and carry out the order that you're given. Google is clearly aware of this issue because after some requests I've made, they've actually included this extra prompt that asks, did the correct device respond? In which case, Google, the answer is no. I did not want to use my Google Home for a phone call, especially while I was holding my phone six inches away from my my face and speaking to it directly. Harumph! 
Sometimes I have to whisper to one device so the other one won't hear, which feels kind of silly, like I'm speaking to my favorite child. I don't know what to call this next one, so we're calling it Smart Features. My Pixel is supposed to know when my home Wi-Fi is nearby and turn the Wi-Fi back on. This is super handy for battery saving and whatnot. I didn't test it a lot, but the one time I did try to use this feature, it just didn't work. It didn't notice where my Wi-Fi was and it didn't turn it back on and I used more data than I wanted to. Thank you, Google. Another smart feature that I like is focus mode. I guess that's kind of a standard thing on smartphones now. I like that short breaks are integrated into the software. I like that distracting apps are grayed out, and I like that when you try to tap on a distracting app, you get a reminder that you're in focus mode and you probably shouldn't be using that app. It's more effective than you think it would be. I think it's because I kind of instinctively reach for distraction instead of consciously thinking about it. So that little extra wall really helps. Next, let's talk about the data transfer, essentially injecting the brains of my iPhone into this new pixel. So I wanted to do this right out of the box, but it only came with 1% battery, which is a little annoying since I need to use the USB-C port on the phone to transfer the data out of my iPhone. This wouldn't have been a big deal, but the wireless charging was being really weird and only worked occasionally and apparently for no reason. After I finished the data transfer, it was fine, but it's just annoying to me that this was a problem. So I had to charge and then do the transfer. Here's what the switchover covers. It covers your calendar, your contacts, and your photos. Also, it could just be that it was about 30 degrees Celsius while I was doing the transfer, but my Pixel got to 38 degrees Celsius. For Americans, that's like 100 degrees in your disappointing made-up system. Either way, it was hot to the touch. I think it's just a combination of the Pixel working overtime to copy my photos, etc., as well as the weather just being really hot, but regardless, it should not get that hot. Uh, the transfer itself took about an hour, and it failed a couple of times because, as I mentioned, the wireless charging cut out a bunch. Also, is it weird to anyone else that it didn't even try to copy over my iPhone's file system? Like, I gave it from to copy whatever it wanted and it just kind of glossed over that. I have a decent amount of stuff stored on my phone and transferring it manually is gonna be a bit of a pain. Also, if there's an Android developer listening, I would really like it if it would notice and try to install equivalent apps. For example, my Pixel sees that I have Duolingo installed so it downloads and installs the Android equivalent. I feel like in this day and age, it wouldn't be asking too much for it to have Google sign me in as well. Despite all of this, swapping over was fairly simple, although I would love to see the swapping software cover the transfer of my eSIM as well. Okay, let's talk about user interface, starting with the calculator, which is better, if only because it has a calculation history, which is super handy. The timing app is better not only because you can set multiple timers, I know, groundbreaking, but also when you do, there's this cool swipeable timer widget that appears on the home screen. It's good design. Next, Google Pay. Nothing too exciting here, except for the fact that I was able to add my debit card, which I've never been able to do with Apple Pay. And it worked basically like it turned my phone into a giant piece of plastic, which was nice. It's weird not having to use my fingerprint for this though. It feels insecure somehow. Um, having said that, Google's payment system is nice in that I don't need to summon my debit card. I can just hold it near a terminal as if I were holding the actual card. I'm sure Google has fixed this in some way, but the hacker in me wants to know what precautions Google has taken to prevent people from skimming phones while they're unlocked. Next, messaging. Messages has this really cool feature that lets you pinch to zoom and make all the text bigger, which is actually super helpful to me because I find myself prone to random bouts of cataracts. Jokes aside though, I have friends who wear glasses for whom this would be an extremely useful feature. I did, however, miss some text messages. So even though text messages are being sent in group chats in iMessage, they're not hitting my SIM card on my Android phone. This is weird, but it also kind of makes sense. It's weird because technically I'm being sent a message and I'm just not getting it and it's not even being forwarded to me in any form. It also kind of makes sense because some of the group chats are specific to iMessage. Something that I did not anticipate, however, was the flack that I got or rather didn't get from my friends who, for the record, hated that I'd moved to Android. This wasn't even like a snobbery thing. It was just that now I couldn't use iMessage and it bothered them a lot. This is partly because <clears throat> for all its flaws and shortcomings, iMessage is actually a pretty great app and frankly, boring old SMS messaging is just terrible. And if I could force everyone to use a better unified system, I absolutely would. Next, let's talk about a feature I use a lot and which I missed while I was using my Android phone, cloud copy and paste. Copy on an iPhone, paste on a MacBook. That's pretty much how it works. This one is kind of a big deal for me. So there are two things that I really love about using an iPhone with a Mac. One, of course, is cloud copy and paste. And two is the way that I can scan text with my iPhone's keyboard camera and just insert it directly into whatever I'm writing. Now, of course, this doesn't happen automatically when you're using an Android phone. However, they did build in a really cool workaround. If you take a picture of the text you want to use, you can just use Google Lens to either copy the text out or, here's the impressive bit, copy it to whatever computer you're also signed into Chrome on. It's really innovative. And it's another example of Google going the extra mile to work with Mac while Apple just kind of sits there and it's like, you're coming to me, bitch. Next, we're talking about security. In a nutshell, Face ID is a significantly better way to unlock any phone, in my opinion. The fingerprint sensor on this is okay, but there are two problems. 
Because it's in screen, I need to be able to look at the phone to position properly. I did find that over time I got used to the position, I could kind of guess. The other problem with the sensor is that it's just not as effortless as Face ID, especially when you're in a hurry. It's just easy to hold your finger incorrectly or not hold it long enough. Speaking of which, how in this flagship phone is the fingerprint sensor as slow as this? I think it's a cool idea that the sensor is under the screen, but we need some improvements. Also, it's really dumb that I can't enable any kind of face unlock, especially given that the Pixel 4 had it like years ago. Next, music. I'd really like it if Google makes the smart speakers that I have show up on the list of devices that I regularly use for music. I think the logic for the moment is that this list is only for Bluetooth devices, but honestly, it would be really nice to have. I also love the multiple play buttons thing. For example, I have a play button for Spotify and a play button for my audiobooks, and it's wonderful, even more so because it's swipeable. This is one of those small things that I really, really envy about Android users in general. Next, notifications. Interesting to note that it would appear app notifications are just turned on by default. This is for whenever you install an app. I don't really like this because frankly, there are lots of apps which I will never really want notifications from and which I'd like to disable at the outset, TikTok and Instagram being two notable examples. Also, one of the things Android users raved about with Android were the better notifications. And truthfully, Android notifications are more compact and just easier to use. Okay, here's the real kicker though. Hold for me. This feature is fucking wonderful. It's actually the reason that I chose to switch to Android, at least temporarily in the first place. The idea of course being that Google Assistant will hang out on a call and wait until someone is available to speak with you. This is one of those ways in which I feel like technology can make human life less mundane or demeaning. Here are some things that I noticed. You can't listen to music or audio while your assistant is waiting in line for you. This is a little frustrating because the whole point of this was to free up your phone and you while you're waiting for someone to pick up. I do really love that my phone gives me a little transcript of what's being said in the moment. However, I would love this feature even more if I could scroll back and look at what's been said previously. This is because while often the recorded messages are repetitive, with a lot of robotic waiting services, there's updates on the estimates of waiting times, which is kind of nice to see. I mean, shit, they could even get Google Assistant to listen to that and then update you on the wait times. Honestly, sitting there listening to the same shitty stock music while a recorded voice explains that we are experiencing longer than usual wait times. Please remain on the line and the next available agent will be with you is one of my least favorite things to do. I know I've suggested improvements for this, but seriously, it is an insanely awesome feature and I'm very thankful for it. Sidebar that this would not even be an issue if companies would just get with the program and let people schedule callbacks because again, it's 2022. What are we doing here? Something that makes me sad is that this feature is only included in the latest updates. So if you're a poor and you have a Pixel 3a or older, you can't have this feature. Again, I understand that older phones can't handle certain updates, but frankly, I think that this should be up to the user what version of software they want to run on their phone. Next, torrenting. This is another really awesome and important thing that I love to be able to do on a phone, especially when I'm traveling. So this actually worked pretty well, but Android's file system is a, uh, a horrible nightmare to navigate. I had so much trouble pulling the files off of this phone. In fact, I only succeeded in doing it once and I can't replicate those results. So yeah, uh, something to watch out for. Summary. Ultimately, this is a very good and serviceable phone. And if I'd never used Face ID, I might be tempted to switch over. God knows I love the camera, hold for me, and a lot of the really great UI things that Apple is not doing. Ultimately, however, this just isn't incentive enough for me to cross the divide and lose access to my journal, which is just miles better on iOS. iMessage mostly just because I use it so much and it's honestly so much better than the Android equivalent, as well as how my device works in the ecosystem with other devices. Maybe later I'll do a whole ecosystem switch over video, but um, for now that's as much as we're doing. If you want to see that, maybe leave me a comment or a like, who knows? Okay, that's pretty much it. This is BRBTG. I'm BRB, and as always, I'll be right back. Thank you.